Hello everybody and welcome to the World Cup round of 16 match between Wolf Beansons and Durun. Uh, Durun getting an extra reroll there. Wolf Beansons won the toss and chose to kick, which uh, I like as an elf team versus a bash team. Uh, with Woodies here and Durun receiving with Orcs. Um, Durun qualified through the ICBBL league on PC. He does, however, mostly play PS4. Um, his win rate is 59% in Champs Ladder, but 64 with Orcs. And Wolf Bainsons has a 73% win rate in Champs Ladder, but 79 with Wood Elves. He qualified from Champs Ladder season 15. And he, oh yes, and also Wolf Bainsons is Maltese and Darun is Canadian. So um, there's the background. And this is an interesting one really because Darun is basically exposed his thrower in, in his in his other two games and I think if he th exposes his thrower here he's done for so and what you not what you may notice here if you if you have eyes <laughs> um, is he's left the tree alone he hasn't put anyone here so the tree can just move if he activates the tree the tree can move and he could run everybody through here could blitz this guy or blitz him and you could just have a pretty strong screen right in the middle here um, I would have been tempted by that to tell you the truth I would have been very tempted now obviously the other the other six it's it's not a crazy split because they're they're still quite close together but I would have really I would have really been tempted to get a bunch of guys in here you, you'd have to blitz one of these two but yeah, I think that could have been really good, getting everyone wedged in there. Um, but as it is, you know, he is quite close together. He didn't move the tree onto these two. I'd have been tempted, if I wasn't going to do that move, I'd have been tempted not to activate the tree. Um, yeah, so he's like, he's just, you know, roughly parallel. And clearly Wolf Bainsons is, is not going to go crazy trying to pressure the ball. <laughs> That, you know, that's a decision he's made for whatever reason, and he's just not going to this drive. He's going to sit back and, and you know, play the passive defense, which is which is effective against Orcs. Orcs are really slow. That You know, they're going to struggle to get forward um, unless they make a bunch of CAS or, or KOs. Unless they get removals, they're going, to, um, they're going to struggle a bit here to make headway. Especially the, the orc thrower, you know, the orc thrower is is uh, movement five. So why he's got block and sure hands, which makes him, you know, and surrounded by guard, which makes him almost impossible for orcs uh, for woodies to do anything to him. He is he is slow, isn't he? So yeah, Wolf Bainson's just has to just is just well clearly is just going to try to lock him down after that first turn. Just trade a mighty blow blitz a turn. It's not that bad, is it? Armor seven versus armor nine. Um, you know, he could he could he could quite likely just get some random removals. Well, not so random because he's got he's actually got mighty blow. Three dice only gets a push. You know, this, is, this is the whole thing why you know people say about elf screening correctly. There's there's no elf screen here, is there? No traditional elf screen, but still he's got he's got his whole team around and they're, they're getting in the way and it's it's really hard for Durun to get forward here. He's gonna have to base some guys up somehow at some point to get forward, isn't he? However, I don't think he should get forward by basing his cage. I think, you know, he could have kept the cage one square back, had a cage and then still, you know, got the strength for basing. Um, now, this is still quite strong because you'd have to w uphill power him to get a hit on the ball, but he could still get a one dice on the ball, you know. It's, 
But you know, clearly we've seen from the first turn that isn't going to be what Wolf Bainson's going to go for. Um, I actually liked going for the uh, Blitz on here without Mighty Blow to get the tree in, into the cage. Um, Wolf Bainson's goes for the kind of the greedy for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you know he's, he just doesn't have a lot of movement left after going for it. That was the problem with a mighty blow hit here. Um, it kind of takes his dancer out. I would rather the dancer was back here. But the mighty blow gets the AV break, which makes the KO. So, you know, and he is pretty safe, actually. He is pretty much covered. Uh, I think what I would have done is... <laughs> sound, I sound like a prick here, but, you know. I think I would have maybe gone for the dodge with the wrestler first, just so that the tree... I think the tree would have been better only on the, on the black orc. Uh, because by leaving him on two, it makes it pretty easy to get the knockdown. And, you know, if you use guard players, um, could get a two dice hit on the dancer afterwards. So, there was, um, there was definitely, that was a bit risky. But then the problem is, obviously, if you do get the mighty blow tackle hit on the dancer, how do you protect the ball? So... You know, getting a bunch of guys in to fight the tree isn't that good for the run, even if he gets the knockdown, which he does. So, um, yeah. And as it happens, he wouldn't have got the knockdown on the dancer anyway. So, you know, I think that was okay from the run. But yeah, if, if he'd only tagged the one guy, he would have either stayed standing well, or he just would have had to commit far too much to hit him, I think. I think that might have been better, but again, it would be a 2+, plus, another 2+, plus to roll, so can't criticise him for doing that. And as it turned out, the Dancer Blitz, you know, didn't really expose him, so that was definitely the right thing to do. Huge Mighty Blow Tackle hit on a Mighty Blow Tackle. Wolf Bainson does have the three re-rolls, so could have maybe greeted it, but, you know, I think it would be crazy too, but, you know, some people would, and sometimes it would pay off. Oh yeah, skills-wise, Wolf Bingson's added an extra wrestler uh, to have two wrestlers, and Darun gave block to his thrower to make him not invincible, but a lot harder to deal with. So now I think this is again a real tough turn for Darun. He's got to get forward. I think the play was to go right here. Now one, two, three, four, five, GFI, GFI. He couldn't have got that far right or that far forward, but. I think he has to kind of go back to the centre to give himself some options because if he sticks on this side, he's just not going to score. It's not even possible to score on this side. Uh, he did get a Kaz though. You know, if he stays here, he's, he's just not going to push through. It's just not possible, not going to happen. So either he stays put and tries to not lose this half, um, or he or he tries to break, you know, right, and then hopefully he overcommits or whatever. This is this is a really horrible, horrible spot for the run. And the full stand-up. Deja vu for Jimmy there. <laughs> the tree refusing the stand-up. And yeah, he's just going to blitz with Mighty Bow again. Doesn't greed it. Good restraint. Some people would have would have re-rolled that. Seventy-five percent knockdown on Agada. Also giving away a block by uh, by not getting the knockdown. I think this was a little bit greedy doing that block. It was, it was a 2 plus effectively, having wrestle. But, seeing as this guy has dodge, I'd have been tempted just to dodge him away. Um, rather than give up the hit. And he, he's given he's given Duran a, a bit of a chance to go down the sideline. Now it's not much of a chance. But if you 2 would DB there and blitzed here, 3, 4, 5, 6. You know, it's just like, I don't know if he's tempting Duran here. To go down the sideline, one, two, three, four, five. You know, he could make a bunch of GFIs and get forward. So maybe he was trying to bait him into doing that. Um, but he did get another dead, another dead catcher there. So Darun's getting some some pretty decent cars here. 
really risky for the tree stand up there. I know he's rooted so he can't blitz in the face or anything, but I don't like getting people stuck on the tree in the middle like this. I think he probably I think he probably should have tried to push down the sideline this turn if he wanted to score. Um, and seeing as he doesn't want to score by the looks of it, he didn't do that. <laughs> you know, yes, he's technically in range. He could go max forward and max forward again, but it's probably not going to happen, is it? <laughs> you know, this is the thing. You've got to think. If you push, if you push for the score as as orcs, you're probably just going to get done by the woodies. So, well, the wood elves don't really have anyone in scoring range now. one dice. I like that one dice a lot better than the dodge, funnily enough. Just because if he gets the push, he can make him free. And what a one dice that was. Gets the pow and kills him. Um, now he hasn't got guard or anything, but let's pause it. Darun has 12 players, and he is slow. The Black Hawks are slow. No, not Darun. <laughs> the Black Hawk is slow, so like replacing him with a lineman isn't even that bad against Woodies. But if he'd had an 11-man team, I think he probably should have aqua that, despite it being a dead and despite the no skills. But um, I think that's absolutely fair to take it there. So yeah, you know, by tagging the ball, dictates where Durun has to blitz. Or Durun goes risky and blitzes somebody else. So now this dodge is going to be absolutely the most crucial roll of the game. One, two, three, four, five. So he's got to get the ball to there anyway. I don't, you know, it's it's just horrible, isn't it? Hasn't stood this guy up yet. Maybe he's going to double GFI or something later. He goes for the dodge, and, you know, every time you play against Wood Elves, you know, you just know this dodge is going to fail, you know? <laughs> but, you know, fair play to Ronnie. He played, he played for the trying to get forward, but... Unfortunately, this is a catcher, the one catcher that isn't dead is in is in perfect range to just go for not perfect range actually one square short of perfect range but he's in an, he's in nearly perfect range to score and yeah he gets him in the scoring range first so that he doesn't you know if he fails the pickup or anything he's still got another chance so I like that actually mighty blow blitz You know, so he's getting a bunch of armor breaks, uh, Wolf Bainsons, but I mean, he is he is absolutely greedy about the the mighty blow hits. You know, he's never gonna blitz with somebody who hasn't got mighty blow, which is fair enough. And yeah, I mean, this this is like the pickup's easier being a two plus rather than a three plus, but it does add the uh, pass and catch. But then the the good thing is, if he'd failed any of it, he still had the ball carry the the. Elf in range, so I think it was a very good player to, to get the catcher in range like that and then pass to him. So yeah, this has really been, you know, absolute domination by the Wood Elves. They didn't really give the Orcs anything to go forward unless they unless they used the Blitz there and had to dodge from the carrier. I mean, if he'd got here, he would have only been able to uh, been uphill or maybe one dice or something. But you know, it was, he did a good job actually to run to get as close as he did and he was unlucky to one in nine. But that's that's what else, isn't it? You know, if if they just play, they can play conventional, you know, just like elf stall kind of thing, and just stop you getting forward, or they can leap in and hit the cage. This is great restraint shown by uh, Wolf Bainson's here, and not hit the uh, <laughs> not hit the throw with mighty blow. I would have been half tempted. I don't think I would have done it just because you know he, he had to make the GFI. He had to have the reroll available for the GFI. So I, I think it was undoubtedly the correct play to not hit the air throw. Especially, but especially as it was Durun's drive. Had that been Wolf Bainson's drive, I think he would have made that hit to, you know, maybe take out the sure hands for the uh, for the defensive drive. But as it happens, it was pretty much a perfect defense 
defensive drive from Wolf Bainstons, I would say. Does lose two catches, but you know, nine players versus ten because this this lineman didn't come back. So you know, maybe the maybe the apple on the on the Kaz or the apple on the KO might have made a difference. Um, but yeah, that's now Wood Elves. This is why they kick because now they have total control over their drive. You know, if this was first half, Wolf Bainsons would have to do a risky stall to try and make sure he got you know one in the into the half time at one nil up. Now he doesn't even need to score. He can he can win this game one nil with desperation running around, or he can score quickly. And it's awful for the Orcs because the Orcs have to defend a long score and a quick score and and everything in between. So yeah, this is absolutely the power of the power of Woody's at play here. To run exposing the thrower to a mighty blow hit. Does nothing. Maybe he could have gone for the defenseless guy to not get a good hit. Take roots instantly. Good old treat. I can see the point of picking up the thrower, but I don't know. I, I do like to carry him a dancer. You know, just for the versatility. Yeah, so it was a bit. You know, maybe he could have. And it has cost him a bit getting the stun from it. But you know, maybe he could have just hit the defensive guy. The thrower nowhere near as important um, in the second half. Now, three dice in the catch it with block, tackle, and mighty blow. Almost guaranteeing the knockdown there. So yeah, I mean, now to be fair, this is the thing that makes it trickier for Wolf Bainsons is he has had two catches cast and he exposed one there. So now he's left with only two players that can dodge reliably. Which is which is a bit concern a bit of a concern. Um, probably a lot of a concern. Well I think he really needed the uh Needed the knockdown there so that this guy could move. So he makes the handoff. And goes too far forward. Now, why isn't he one square back? That's the question that only Wolf Bainsons knows the answer to. Even if he was one square back, one, two, three, four, five, six, GFI, GFI to hit him. Now it's just a straight up one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, six. It's just, he's just left the one dice on the ball. He, he had to be here or here. Um, or here or here, whatever. I think that's an absolute definitive mistake by by Wolf Bainson's here. You can't get someone of one dice, even though you know, even though it's only a power to get him. He gets it. And now his drive is in absolute tatters, isn't it? So I, I don't hate the actual going for the score there so, so much, but I think maybe he should have. Also he gave up a hit there to mark him. Um, yeah, he just he could have been here, couldn't he? And he would have still been in range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, five, seven. He could have been he could have been way further back than what he was. And now the game has turned on its head really, isn't it? Getting some cars. Some more removals here. Three cars now for the Woodies. And he can still roll dice. I thought this was incredibly, incredibly greedy here to make this block with Mighty Blow. Because he's going to blitz now with Mighty Blow. And if he gets a push to one of these squares, it makes 
really hard. If he blitzes with this guy, he gets to power into there, and you know, and then he can go and get the balls. So this this was really incredible. It basically gives up a player just so he can make a mighty blow hit. I think that was incredibly greedy. Um, the KO would have come without mighty blow. And he actually decides to run back here next to the rooted tree. So that's okay, let's even get other people involved. And then I just, I don't get this running up field. You know, if you're gonna run back to screen, run back and screen. <laughs> um, and he made a GFI there as well, and I think at this point, you know, Wolf Bainson's head's gone here. Doesn't even try to re-roll that. Dies and gives up two dice on the ball. I mean, it was just, it was just a really weird collapse, basically mental collapse by Wolf Bainson's here. And uh, yeah, you know, you gotta. You got to feel a bit sorry for him because he had the he had the game won, but then on the other hand, it wasn't dice that lost him the game. So at least there is that. It's horrible if you just lose because of dice. This is this is one that I think he should take on the chin. Really, I didn't like this blitz angle from Durham because he's got a GFI to hit. Yeah, I would have just GFI'd with this guy, and then okay, you're getting a hit from the tree, but then the ball's getting away from the tree, and then the blitzer could have run run up and collected it. Um, but then on the other hand, if he pushed the other way, it's closer to his players, gets the KO. Yeah, on the other hand, pushing it from the other side, then there's two L's there, so pushing this way. So, you know, it's six and two threes, not not wrong from either, either way of doing it, wouldn't have been wrong. And that, uh, that tree being rooted makes a massive difference because if he wasn't rooted you would straight away blitz and clear the tackle zone and uh, you know first action would blitz blitz there so this is this is bad as well from Wolf Bainson's here because a push doesn't do him any favours at the moment his dancer can go one two three four five six which is a three plus dodge followed by a two plus dodge if he pushes him nothing changes so because he can't push him there because then he can't get the pass off so he could only push him back which doesn't change anything so that was a GFI for no reason and a reroll gone for no reason and he doesn't have the reroll for the pickup and yeah it's just all it's all an absolute disaster at this point for Wolf Bainson's and he's somehow got to get his head back in the game after after really, if, you know, I, I can understand him running forward for the touchdown now. Um, you know, he felt like he had to. He was running out of plays. Didn't have any catchers standing up, so he didn't have any reliable dodges. Um, but yeah, he just did it in a bad way, didn't he? He exposed the ball, and there's one thing in blood ball: you can't give somebody a ball sack as easily as that, can you? <laughs> <laughs> it was just literally, it was within six squares, no no dice rolls to get one dice. And sure, sure, Durham was a little bit lucky to get the 30% knockdown, but, you know, um, Durham was also unlucky to fail the 11% dodge away, so. So now this is the huge pick up in a tackle zone, hand off, hand off play, isn't it? But then that gets strip ball into, into play. So... Not so good for the run. Because now this is just a. Not even a dodging, is it? It's just a straight. Oh, it is. Yeah, just a leap in. Yeah, leap in one dice. But double ones there. And that, that is actually pretty huge, isn't it, to be fair? To be fair, it's a pretty huge double one. If you've got the one dice strip, maybe you still wins here. But now it's looking, looking ever worse for him. As, uh, as Darun can just roll forward here. Cage on either side. Cage on either side, guard on either side. Did outrun his cage a little bit there. 
and hasn't made a safe move first. Could have rolled quad skulls here. I'd really want to foul this dancer, but the problem is he's going to have an offensive assist or you're going to give a hit to the tree, neither of which is very desirable. But doesn't foul, but he gets in there. And this is the thing, you know, this is Woody's. After they've taken four cards in a KO, they've got four, five elves on the pitch and a rooted tree. So they've effectively got five players on the pitch. But they can still do something. Like, you know, it's crazy, isn't it? They can still do something. They can still run back and they can, you know, maybe leap strip next turn. And you just you just really can't say that of other teams. No other team is, can keep itself in a game in a dicing. And you know, okay, this isn't four cas on any other team would be clearly be a dicing. Four cas on wood elves isn't so crazy. It's still a bit of a dicing though. But only a bit. I mean, Durun has been hitting Takamite Glow every turn. So for some reason he bases his cage and then doesn't blitz there, I mean, you, you have to blitz this guy. It's uh, unbelievable from Durham. That really is. I don't want to say he deserves to lose because of that, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> no, um, you know, it's a bit harsh, but that's really poor. Um, also... A bit of a mistake from Wolf Bainson's here, because th this lineman could have run over here. And this catcher could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, I guess you can see the point. He wants a re recovery. But the run's only got two turns left. So stripping the ball here is pretty good, isn't it? So he, he goes for the one dicer. And by getting a pal, now the, dan the dancer can, you can follow on the dancer and get two dice here. Um, but he doesn't follow. And he doesn't move this this catcher in. So one, two, three. Yeah, he could he could have moved the catcher first. So that's I would have definitely gone either made the first block two dice or made the second block two dice. And he uses his last reroll on this ball down. And uh, you know it's it's tough to call that wrong again. You know, and especially as he moved, <laughs> he moves this catcher up there anyway at the end. So it's like he absolutely should have moved that one first. And got the got the assist and made it a two dice blitz, and then with a reroll he may have popped the ball out, and you know could well have could well have picked up the win in normal time then. But yeah, so I think I think Wolf Bainsons has made a few mistakes here in the second half, but you know it, it's hard to keep a cool head when you down loads of players. Um, I know a guy who did in his <laughs> in his second round. He kept his head completely whilst down men for most of the match and played spectacularly well. And uh, but it looks like Wolf bainson has gone a bit gone a bit uh, lost the plot a little bit. I mean, not not majorly, um, but it's gone a bit bad and and Darun is is making things hard for himself now orcs aren't the fastest team in the world but you know he left the cage based for no reason last turn and now wolf Baines is probably kicking himself that he <laughs> that he's used his last reroll because he kind of needed the power there um so now what does he have to do he has to He has to dodge out here with the catcher. One, two, three, four. No, one, two, three, four, five. So four plus dodge from the catcher. So 75 percent And then the dancer can do a 75 percent dodge in to one dice. Um, he doesn't do that though. He does the uphill, which, you know, I think he shouldn't have done. <laughs> And 
the question is here is, is to run, do you go for the surf? And I think you definitely go for the surf. Just because surfing the strip ball dancer can, you know, can be absolutely crucial. He doesn't go for the surf. He could have made it three dice. He could have made it pretty safe, I think. Um, he doesn't go for that. But that, that's absolutely fair, you know. You know, don't want to roll any more dice than he has to. He would have felt really stupid if he'd gone for the surf and then and then failed, you know. So this way he definitely keeps his reroll for over time. Or well, gives himself the best chance to keep his reroll for over time. So yeah, fair play to Durum there. And yeah, both offences have failed, 1-1. One, one. And now, even despite losing all these players, Woody's have got a chance if they win the toss. But Durum wins the toss. And now it's five elves in a tree. The tree you can safely ignore. So it's basically five elves versus 11 orcs. So <laughs> something has got to happen spectacularly badly from Durun's side or ridiculous dice from Wolf Bainson's or both <laughs> for uh, Wolf Bainson's to have a chance now. And yeah, I think, I think ultimately it was his fault that he got himself in this position. I, you know, I don't want to be harsh on him at all, but he was he was down to be fair he was down all of his catches so i i can definitely see why he went forward but it was absolutely 100 percent a position mistake to allow you that your you know ball carry to get one dice with no dice rolls in in that situation absolutely sometimes you can tempt people to one dice the ball you know with a, a dodge and a couple of gfis or whatever but he was desperate there you know he only had about five people unengaged he just, you know, there's no way he was he was he was baiting a, a hit on the ball there. You know, there there is a call for that sometimes, but in this situation, absolutely not. Now there's four elves. That's the ball in nearly a cage. It's unlikely to matter that the back isn't protected. Big big KO fail as well. If he'd had two dances, I think he would have felt a little bit better about his chance. I mean, four elves. It's there's not a lot you can do here, uh, Wolf Bainsons. You know, Durham can just leave leave that orc on the on the tree and you know, just cage up over here. Blitz the dancer with tackle mighty blow as well. And for some reason <laughs> for some reason Durun doesn't do this. <laughs> he decides to uh to cage up down the sideline. All these free players here, he could have saved, caged completely safely with guard either side against strip ball. Um, instead, he decides to make a cage where if he gets power, the ball could go in the crowd and anything could happen. And also, he's going to have to GFI after the blitz um, to, to, keep the bot, to keep the cage full. So, while I think... Um, Wolf Bainson's made a bit of a, well, you know, did make a horrific misplay to, to let Durun back into this. Durun has, like, kept giving him shots and, you know, kept giving him, you know, way many, many more chances than he should have had. Straight up, he's got the leap into the uphill, and if he, if he strips it, well, he can't strip. One in nine to, um, to get him. And then the ball could go in the crowd and, you know, the catcher could have got it. And as it is, he goes for the the kind of safer play. I mean, uphill when you're just looking for a power is a bit crap. But he could have done, <laughs> you know, he could have done. 
<laughs> and if he had double won that GFI, it would have looked terrible as well. He could have got a surf, all sorts of things. So yeah, really, as yeah, uh, he has made a meal of it, to him. but you know, again, you know, both players, there's there's nerves and stress and everything. So I'm not hating them or insulting them or anything, but yeah, there was a, you know, in the first half, I thought. I thought Wolf Bainson's played absolutely fantastically well, but the second half, he, uh, he absolutely gave gave the game away really with a few big mistakes. A few big mistakes in the second half. No blitz here, was there from the Orcs? They could have, uh, they could have done it. And again, this is just like a two plus, four plus for a one dice, and. This doesn't really help. I guess you could have pushed him, but then that's a three plus. Three plus to push is, is a three plus three plus is worse than a four plus. So he could have just two plus four plus into one dice. So you know the fact that Darun had this many players advantage, um, and he still managed to get caught on the sideline and giving up one dices on the ball. Um, you know it wasn't it wasn't great, but again, big match. All that kind of stuff. You know, I'm not hating on him or insulting him or anything. But he sure did make a meal. Make a meal of this match. When it, you know, really Wolf Benson. Wolf Benson's decided it. He played great defence. Still got lucky to score on defence, you know, with a 1 in 9 from the thrower. But did play great defence. Then played not awful offence. It was an awful mistake on offence. Because, you know, he was kind of pushed into scoring early like that. I think that was fair that, you know, you, being down the catches, every, every, that's terrifying. Because, you know, you, you're relying on reliable dodgers <laughs> to an extent. Um, yeah. And now there's a vague chance. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight GFI. Uh, um, or double GFI to one dice in. But instead, Wolf Bainson's goes for this Rando one dice, which I don't really know. I think he should have maybe he's gone for the uphill. One in nine, it could work, couldn't it? It worked for him in the first half, but there you go. To run, is he going to make the GFI? That would be crazy. Good. Good. Nobody can reach him, so it would be absolute insanity to go for the GFI there. Everyone's fully out of range, so... He'll make a foul for fun, will he? Or hit the tree for fun or something? But yeah, I mean, you know, Durun, Durun did the right things, you know. He, he, he went for the ballsy play of trying to score a touchdown on his own drive. <laughs> when maybe he should have just admitted defeat and caged up and, and taken the nil-nil. Um, but, you know, fair play to him. He, he tried to win and, you know, he, he did enough to win, didn't he? You know, it's, uh, I'm not having a go at him. It, you know, other people could have had these dice and, and still lost. So, fair play to run. And, uh, yeah, Wolf Bainson's mad. I think that one mistake, and I think, I think he was a bit tilted after that mistake as well, I think. I think that one mistake added to further non-optimal decisions um, later in the half. But that, that was the big one. That, that mistake was absolutely massive to just give him the, give him the easy two dice. You know, he, he, should have, he should have made it so that he couldn't have done it all, really, but yeah, that was way too easy. And, you know, Durun, Durun did have, did have good, good dice um, in terms of removals. In terms of blocking, you've got 28, 21, 18. So poor dice for Wolf Bainston's blocking. And 19, 27, 33, including 20 powers. So more powers than skulls and both downs combined. So, you know, nearly as many powers as pushes. He, you know, Durun did have good dice. But, you know, he, he, he didn't make the fatal mistake that Wolf Bainston's did. So, you know, well played. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.